Line Metro service that runs from the airport to the city centre, but there is a really reliable airport bus service that's cheap and only takes around 30 minutes to get into the city. It runs seven days a week and operates between 5.20am and 12.45am and is located directly outside the airport terminal beside the taxi rink. A taxi is obviously far more convenient, as do be aware that the airport bus will only skirt around the south edge of the city and won't be able to get too far inside. So if your hotel is quite central, then expect to walk from the bus stop to your final destination. For a visit to Seville you probably won't use the public transport system much. The main city centre is quite compact and narrow and not really suitable for a modern transport network. So the best way to explore the city is generally on foot. There are two great tours though worth considering that will allow you to see a lot of the city without having to walk the whole time. The first is the hop on hop off bus which provides 14 stops both in central locations of the city and outside. Adults cost around 20 euros and children from 5 to 12 are 10 euros children four and under are free and for an extra 12 euros you can add a river cruise to the ticket a cruise that lasts around an hour and runs all year round an alternative way to explore Seville is on a horse and cart a very popular tourist attraction the best place to pick one up is around the cathedral and prices are fixed by the local government so every rider will and is forced to quote the same amount you'll pay 45 euros and the ride generally lasts for 40 minutes the journey certainly gives a different perspective of the city and is a really lovely way to explore it. We found the horses to be in really good condition and from what we saw, we didn't have any misgivings about their care. So this is Seville and we'll take you through some of the key attractions to be aware of. As we've already said, the public transport network isn't a good option to explore, so a lot of what you'll see in this city will be on foot. You can see the metro line near the bottom as a yellow zigzag, and admittedly there is a modern tram line that runs from Plaza Nueva, which is just north of the cathedral, right down to San Bernardo metro stop, which is only a few minutes walk from Plaza de España. So for those looking to see this attraction, the tram is actually quite a good option and only costs around a euro for one ride and tickets can easily be purchased at any metro stop and you then need to stamp your ticket once you board the tram. First up is the cathedral and is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the city so queues can build up and you're therefore recommended to purchase your ticket online beforehand as you can then pick a time you'd like to visit and avoid queuing on the day. Children under 15 are free and adults cost around nine euros. The ticket also provides entrance to Lagerauda, the bell tower, and to a great view over the city. Access to the top is actually via a series of ramps, not stairs, so it's quite practical for any age. Another highlight is the Alcazar of Seville. This is the oldest royal palace in Europe and is still a fully functioning royal residence. And parts of the palace remain reserved for the royal family when they visit the city. Beautiful Moorish architecture that is so synonymous with Andalusia and quaint gardens within the grounds makes for a great place to spend a couple of hours. Again, it's advisable to buy your ticket online in advance to skip the queues with adult tickets costing around 18 euros and under 16s are free. The Plaza de España was built in 1928 for the Ibero-American exhibition to celebrate the discovery of America by Spanish conquistadors. Film fans will recognize the building from Lawrence of Arabia and more recently Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Other than a couple of mini museums, the main use of the building today is for various governmental offices so a visit is simply to admire the building itself and the grounds that surround it. There's a 500 metre canal in front where there are boat rides on offer and the canal passes under four bridges that represent the ancient kingdoms of Spain. And around the plaza are 49 pretty tiled alcloves, themselves each representing a different province of the country. The enormous Maria Luisa Park was also developed in the same year to provide the backdrop to the plaza itself and is a fantastic place to relax and have a picnic. Last up is the Metropole Parasol, affectionately known as the Mushroom or Las Setas. And for a city blessed with such beautiful historic architecture, the Metropole Parasol stands out as an ugly duckling and was heavily criticised during its construction in 2011 as being out of kilter to the rest of the city. It's certainly got a unique look, being made of wood and is situated in the very heart of the city. The building serves a number of purposes. It has an archaeological museum in the basement with Roman and Moorish ruins discovered when the area was being excavated. But its main attraction is the top floor where visitors can walk along various walkways 30 metres above ground and enjoy awesome views over the city. Walkways are meshed so although completely open to the elements is a very safe place for children. 
Tickets are just three euros and it's open every day from around 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. There's also a nice little restaurant at the top and your ticket provides you with a discount. So for some ideas about what to do with children, we'd recommend the aquarium and La Isla and Agua Magica. The aquarium is quite new, having only been opened in 2014, and is a really good place to perhaps escape the summer heat when Seville does get quite warm. Opening hours do vary throughout the year, so check before you go, but it is open all year round and adults cost 15 euros and children 10 euros to visit. The number one tourist attraction for children in Seville is La Isla Magica, which is a big theme park and is suitable for all ages, although some rides do enforce a height restriction of just over a metre. Within the park itself is a water park called Agua Magica, and you can either visit both or just La Isla Magica. Please note you can't just buy a ticket for the water park. It's only really open between May and October, and expect to pay around 40 euros an adult for entrance to both parks, or around 25 euros for a ticket for just La Isla Magica. Under fours are free and tickets are reduced for children under 10. They do have plenty of online promotions though, so be sure to check before you travel to see what discounts are currently on offer. <laughs>